Well, g'day, Max here again. Welcome back to the shop. So, this episode we've got a couple of interesting things to carry on with as we begin another project. So we'll be playing with some dovetails, but we've got to do a fair bit of uh, working out to get to the correct dimensions. And we've had a couple of things rock up in the mail, so let's swing around to the bench behind me and we'll show you what our plan of attack is. So we had a letter come in the mail from Randy Richard over in California. So he's sent us through some of his um, shop stickers. Now, also with the stickers, there was this little red box. I thought, what's he got in here? Bloody old end mill or something? <laughs> but as it turns out, there's this little gem inside. What this is, is one of these new scribers. Very well made. It's engraved, Swan Valley Machine Shop, Randy Richard in the shop, USA, Max. So it fits nicely in the hand. So yeah, it's a, it's a nice bit of work, beautiful bit of work, well made. So I've had a good run out of his previous model, and this was still this one is still going strong. So I will expect this will stand up the same. But um, no, he makes a damn nice product. So thanks, Randy. Cheers. Now the other day I was contacted by um, a crowd called Olight and they were asking if I would like to review one of their torches. So they sent this little one over. Now this model is a, a Baton 3. So it's quite a handy little compact torch. It has a magnet on the back of it. You can stick it anywhere. It's a rechargeable torch. So. It has a USB charger, just clips on the back, the magnet holds it in place. So it just comes with a little bag and there's a lanyard for it as well, which is just so you don't lose it if you choose to use that. So this little torch, it's got four settings. So it's got a low of 12 lumens, a high, oh sorry, a medium of, of 60, a high of 300, and it's got a turbo of 1200. So, she's a bright little bugger, this one. So, to go through the four settings, we have low, medium, high, and turbo. So we'll put this to good use in our current project that we are working on in this video. So thanks to Olight, cheers. So the project we're going to be working on over the next couple of videos, we're going to manufacture all the missing parts of our universal cutter grinding fixture here. This is our LA Rochelauer um, cutter grinder fixture. So what we're missing is we're missing an attachment that goes on here which extends out and it basically becomes like a finger rest. So when you're grinding the cutter it keeps the correct helix angle in relation to the wheel. This would normally sit underneath and a extension bar would come out and the finger rest would go up like so. So I did email L.A. Rochelauer some time ago about any information regarding to this tool and the company no longer makes these items anymore. They make items for uh, blow moulding type tooling. So, But they are still in business and they did send me some information so we'll have a look at that. So they sent quite a bit of information um, regarding this tool. So this one here, all I could send was the, the one, it's a similar one, it's a unit 1B and mine's 
I don't know, I'm just going to take a guess and it's probably, maybe it's a 1A, as mine doesn't have the port here for the airline for the air bearing. Maybe I could drill one in and see how it reacts. So parts that we're going to be concentrating on is this dovetail sliding arrangement down the bottom, this square bar, and there's a bit of a clamping mechanism to hold the indexing finger up here. The other part which we're going to make is it's a tilting sub-base as shown here. So this allows you to tilt the whole grinding fixture away from the grinding wheel when you're indexing for the next flute to be ground. That way you don't have to alter any of the settings on your, the depth settings on your tool and cutter grinder. So yeah, the sub base, the finger arrangement, and the other one we're going to make is a detent. So this part here is the same as this part here which we already have. Well the clamping arrangement is the same and the body of it's the same but instead of the dovetail arrangement we'll build up this detent arrangement here. So as we can detent into the slots which on our one um, here are here. And they just turn around and just not quite, actually quite a nice fit in that. Remember this is the, the in an earlier video we lapped all this, this all this lot in just to get that perfect fit. So anyway, we'll swing you around and we'll have a look at the calculations we've got to do to determine our sizes. So this will represent our male dovetail, which we have here. So we need to get as much information out of this one to cut the female. So these red circles here are our gauge pins. So with those we can establish a width across the outside. Six one point six one zero five, which is an easy one. The other dimension we need to, we can establish off this piece, is our depth from the surface there down to the working area, which is here and here. So on this one here, one side's one hundred and thirty-one thou. The other side is 129,000. Now, to establish the angle, we used our pocket comparator. So I'll show you a photo of that. There you can see there, it's pretty close to 75 degrees. Okay, as you've seen through that photo, it's as close as we can establish to 75 degrees, which is fine. That gives us something to work with. As we progress through the calculations, there'll be a bit of backtracking, and we'll end up with this figure again. And through our backtracking, if with our calculations, if this figure pops up, we know then we were pretty accurate with our angle measurement there. It's just like a it's a bit of a, a, a roundabout circle we've got to go in to get all our dimensions. So what we need, we need this dimension here. It's a very critical dimension. So all these lines, they're a theoretical, theoretical line. Now, using our gauge, uh, gauge pins, we know then our diameter of our gauge pins are 108 thou. So we know then gives us that 
gives us that. So what we can do then is using a triangle we can bisect our 75 degree line through there like that. Drop our centre line down to there like that. Gives us this triangle here. Which is this triangle here. So this angle becomes 37.5, which is half of 75 degrees. Our centre height, half the diameter, which is 0.054. And this leg of the triangle here, which is here, 0 0.0703, 0 0.0703. Okay, so we can add all these up, deduct it from that, and it will give us that. So we add up these four numbers here, that comes to 0.2486, and we deduct it from 6105, and we come up with a dimension here of 0.3619. So as you'll start to see, there's a lot of measurements we can't directly measure off here, that's why we're using these theoretical lines because these corners will have broken edges and there's no way we can get in neatly right to the base of that corner to get the accurate dimension for here so it's all worked off theoretical lines and it seems to work okay works for Joe Pizinski this is very similar if not similar to what he's just done in one of his videos of course he had some of the dimensions already on his print for the part that he's making whereas we are working off an existing part so we do have a couple more calculations to go okay let's head over and draw up our female dovetail and see what information we can transfer from what we've achieved here onto what we're going to do with the female dovetail now this is our female dovetail the one we have to cut in our part and as you can see there's an odd oddity here there's two lines here this represents our clearance in the bottom of the dovetail as a dovetail you only need two working surfaces across here and there one on each leg that is this surface here can be in clearance so we're going to put the clearance into the part we're going to make so we don't have to alter any of this. So we have an imaginary line comes through here and this is the line, our theoretical line that we're going to work with and the other line, our cut line when we mill it is 5 thou below it. So the information we can fill in straight away we know our dowels, 108 thou diameter. So that gives us uh, 0.054 here, 0.054 there. So it's radius, half the diameter. We'll also bisect our 75 degrees again. and drop a line down to the base here. So we know this angle there is 37.5 degrees. We know this leg of the triangle here, which is our radius, which is 0.054. So then this leg here, 0.0703 the same with this side 0703 we're starting to fill in some blanks 
Now, we need the dimension from the top corners, so we can get that by dropping a line from the corner down to the base there. Okay, so we can get a bit of information there. So we know this leg of the triangle is 130 thou because we've averaged 129 and 131. So that gives us that height. So that, that gives us a triangle of 0 0.130 there. We know the angle is 75 degrees. So then once that's calculated out, we can achieve the side there of 0 0.0348, which is the same for the other side, 0 0.03. Four, eight. If we go back to our male dovetail, we have this dimension pops up here again, 0.3619. We can put that one up there, 0.3619. There's the minor width. So that gives us enough information now to get a corner to corner dimension here. 0, 3, 4, 8 times 2, because there's two of them, comes to 0 0.0696, and this is where we add on our 0 0.3619, okay, plus 0 0.3619, comes to 43.15, so our width across here will be 0 0.4. 315. So that gives us everything we need now for our dimension in between the pins. So we've got 0 0.0703 uh, times 2 is 0 0.1406 plus we add on one pin diameter or two half pin diameters so that becomes 0.108 now, we deduct 0.2486, what we've got here, from 0.4315, so write that down there, okay, 0.4315 minus point. 2486 comes to 0.1829. So that's our dimension there, which we will check with gauge blocks when we machine the sides of our dovetail. Okay, just before we head over to the mill, here's a formula that I've plucked out of the machinery's handbook. Now this gives the dimension over the pins for a male dovetail, which is your gauge pin diameter uh, multiplied by 1 plus the cotangent of half the angle plus the minor width. I mean that's all good and well, but bear in mind where we are working off an existing part, not a drawing which has some of the information already on a drawing. So after we'd gone through all of our calculations to fill in a lot of missing numbers we can now apply this formula just like as a double check to our initial measurements that we made on our angle and gauge pin width and whatnot so as it came out we've put our numbers in um, that's our missing number we didn't have which was the minor width down here sorry down here and we've come up with a figure of 61, uh, 0 0.6106 across the pins, which is what we initially me measured at 6105. So that's only one tenth difference. So that's a good verification that we did measure our 75 degree angle 
quite a weld as best that we could and it, it does actually turn out to be 75 degrees because if the angle was different it would affect this figure here as well so anyway it's just a um, simple quick check with some extra numbers and now we can go ahead and start cutting well the little Olight Batten 3 torch proved to be a um, quite a winner so it fits on the mag base DTI holder very well I can position it wherever I like and yeah no it's a quality bit of gear so in the uh, video description there's a, a link as they're having a bit of a sale on at the moment as well so yeah if you're interested check it out but um, um, it's a good seems to be um, quite a nice bit of gear I know they're not cheap but good quality tooling never comes cheap anyway so as far as I'm concerned gives a thumbs up from me We have a 3.8 slot drill in at the moment and that will slightly overcut the width of our dovetail by about 6.5 hour per side which is fine. It means we won't have a sharp corner on the edge of the dovetail. We'll have a nice little flat land there which doesn't affect the performance of it at all. So we'll touch off and we'll come up the 130 thou plus the extra 5 thou for the clearance at the bottom of the dovetail. So we'll deburr that and take a check with a depth mic, but I think we've got about 5,000 to go. So we've got 4,500 to go. Now it is important that this depth is um, critical because it will affect the measurement we have between the pins later. So we're probably, what are we, a tenth over or something there? If that, maybe. So that'll be fine, so we'll set up now with the dovetail cutter. So I'll just put a bit of sharpie marker down so we can see the Touch off.
Now we'll offset our cutter 17 thou either side of centre and take a cut through. So that should pull us up a couple of thou short either side of our finished dimension. Alright, so we'll offset the head of the mill now and that will enable us to cut the 75 degree sides. Yeah, so we're cranked over 15 degrees. So the 15 degrees on top of the 60 degrees already on the dovetail cutter will give us our 75 degree wall angle. Okay, I'm going to have to blue all this up with a marking blue. Just the Sharpie. Okay, what I'm going to do now is gently ease the cutter in. So we're just touching off on the base down here at the same time as the bottom portion that we've just cut with the 60 degree cut. So I'm really aiming right for that very corner is where I need to touch off. It's a bit of a wiggle to get it in but I'm sure we'll get there. So that's it for that side. So we'll tilt the head around. We'll give you a closer look first, then we'll tilt the head around and we'll do the other side. So we've cut right to the bottom of the groove down there and we've left the faint blue line up the top which is our land. So that's nice there, no burrs, no sharp edges as it's a small flat which runs all the way across. So let's get the head tilted over for the other side and we'll do that one. So we're going to do the same process with this side. Touch off more so on the bottom first and then just ease into the sides and then we'll take a, we'll do a cut through then we'll take a measurement. OK, 
Okay, we're just contacting the base there. I'm going to set a gauge pin in there now and see if we can get a measurement. So we put our 5,000 shim in and that's to bring the base up to the gauge height, the base of the dovetail measuring groove. So we've got some gauge blocks here which are 175,000 thick. And they go in quite good, nice and firm. So we've got seven thou left to take out. So let's take another cut. So we've got a uh, 50 and a 133 gauge block. So that, that puts us one tenth over where we're supposed to be. And that goes in there quite firm. It's nothing. No play in that. That's beautiful. So according to the measurements, we're there. So we'll try our part. Like right, that's she's in there. <laughs> that's it. I might just take a spring cut through that, and uh, I think we're good to go. That's it, we're there. Beautiful. Yep. As solid as a rock, that. Okay. So incidentally these will form the two end pieces that go on here. So what we can do now 
is the next feature on these. We'll have to put them, shape them up into the right shape so they look, look the right part on the ends there. So it's a bit of fiddling around when you don't have the right size or the right angle cutter but as you can see it can be done and it can be done very accurately. Well we had a good result in the end. We got a nice tight fitting dovetail which is what was required. There's those, the two of them, there's a pair there, slip over the very end of this piece and form part of the sliding mechanism. So there's another dovetail we have to do in the middle and then we've got some half inch square holes to broach. So yeah, uh, in spite of all the calculations, uh, uh, that gets quite involved, but uh, oh, we had a good result in the end. So anyway, thanks for sticking by and uh, we'll see you in the next video.